Put your logs, I need them. If you haven't turned them in, I need those. So I'm going to put my Oh, sorry. Okay, did you guys all put your logs in the bin? Okay, all right. Ready? So get this corner. I'm going to steal your attention, and then tomorrow we perform. I have time. Okay. Hey, is Ms. Coronado, is it recording? Ooh, I'm so sorry. Ah! We're gonna, we're gonna. I just can't. If you guys yeah. didn't know, we're still in school as well, and this is part of our class for me to teach you, so. Yeah, it's good. Okay. Hey, so this first part is going to be a little bit of a review for you guys. Is it, who can tell me about projection? Projection is speaking really loudly so that the people in the very, very back can still hear you. But make, try your hardest not to scream. Otherwise, that'll hurt the ears of the people close to you. It's really like, uh, most of it's controlling your breathing. Because like, if you talk with like really short breaths, you can't really make it loud. So you gotta like take deeper breaths. Oh. Projection comes from your stomach because, like, I was thinking of like head voice and lower voice and stomach voice, and use your stomach to like go louder and project out. Good. It's how you speak when you're on stage. Like Arden said, the breathing, like, if you take short breaths and if you take longer breaths. Yeah, uh, you guys and definitely have what projection is down just as kind, kind of a and an example definition, I have the ability to make your voice easily heard in a large space such as a theater or auditorium. Um, and you all were very incorrect in the you want to be loud but you're not yelling or screaming, it's just a natural loud. Um, and also, you push from your stomach and your diaphragm to help it be uh, Now, um, touched on it with making sure that the people in the back row can hear you. Anyone want to add on about why projecting is important to that? Um, but like, it, like, people in the front can hear you, and the people in the back, if they can't hear you, they'll make like, voice of the time, like, can't turn. Very good. And, and it's kind of like a give and take. Both if you're louder, you seem more confident, but also it kind of gives you a sense of confidence as well. well and you guys have learned a few you know, vocal warm ups over the last few you know, months. And anyone have any particular favorites? The burrito. The burrito song, yes. That's me. Well, I'm going to call it, I'm going on a bear hunt. Ah, uh, bear hunt. I love the big old moose. The moose song, yes. And a lot, all of them are, vocal warm ups can be pretty fun sometimes. Okay, so we touched on and it a little bit. How do you project? Um, okay, so projection also has to do with like how you're standing and how you're acting yourself. And like, so you stand straight and like, like how like your foot goes is like a strong block. Like, the like the most strong for um body position is full front. So you have to stand full front and talk as loud as you can. Very good. Breathing all the way down to the diaphragm. And how exactly does the diaphragm work? It works like a big old uh, compression blanket, kind of, on your lungs. So it pulls, it, it inflates, and then it deflates your stomach as well. So it pushes all the air from your lungs out. Very good. And, and when 
and you breathe in, your lungs expand, and the diaphragm kind of goes down, but when you exhale, um, the diaphragm kind of helps push the air up as the lungs shrink to push the air out. And when you, like, when you know you're doing diaphragmatic breathing, your chest won't move, but your stomach will. Very good, man. That's pretty much the first part of my lesson. I'm going to do it anyway, um, but yeah, you guys got the, uh, so, and so uh, talked about it. Does anyone want to demonstrate? Aiden, come on up. Demonstrate that you're breathing? Yeah. Very good. And, and, and very good. Lots of things to keep it in mind, like talked about. Um, give Aiden a round of applause. Yes. And I your mouth too. I was breathing through my nose. Yeah. Um, and and yeah. Uh, you want to let the abdominal area expand because yes, the lungs expand, but the chest shouldn't. And like you shouldn't look any bigger around this area. Uh, can anyone tell me why? Because your stomach is expanding on your chest. Yes, and, and basically it's because as what's this thing around our lungs that protect them? Ribs. ribs. Our ribs. Our ribs don't get any bigger. So. Oh, yes, the lungs can expand, but they can't expand any larger than the ribs. <laughs> and so, yeah? I have a question. How can uh, ribs break? Very strong forces. It's rare, but I've actually known of it to happen. And, but no, you won't be able to get so much air into your lungs that your ribs will break. Yes. It's like in dance, they teach you to breathe lifting up instead of like this out. You have to, you have to like lift up with your body. So like, I don't know. It's just what we were taught. It kind of like makes it to where you have more air and you can do more stuff. That, the comparison, that is a very good thing to point out. Dancers are often taught to breathe up, uh, but that's also because they are moving and there is a lot and more having to do with balance. And for theater, we do more of letting it breathe out and singers and musicians will also do it. And I tried to find one of my favorite and movie clips. It's of a teacher who is a vocal teacher working with one of his students, very uptight, very fun accent. And he tells her diaphragm in, stomach out, it's okay to look fat. That joke is always just like a give and take. Some classes that's hilarious, some classes. I think that's hilarious. <laughs> yes? Um, Laugh. That's something. Yeah. Like seniors use diaphragm to like build muscles and keep going longer singing without having to stop. But so the same thing in theater, you can like pop longer without having to stop. Yes, it will help you go longer. Didn't Adina Menzel do that in Defying Gravity for the Wicked? Yes, pretty much every performer uses diaphragmatic breathing, <laughs> but Adina Menzel in Wicked, especially for that last note in Defying Gravity, very good example of being diaphragmatic breathing. Now, Arden mentioned an expanding upwards, and yes, that can be very helpful, but I'd like to caution you against another reason why we particularly teach you to expand outwards instead <coughs> of up, is because it's very tempting if we tell you up to do this. Can someone tell me what's wrong with this? Um, it's bad, one, it's bad for your posture. Two, you can't really breathe well because you're scrunching everything up. And it's just, it doesn't give you much room to really breathe correctly. Yeah. Uh, for me, whenever I do that, um, I for everyone, but it kind of restricts my throat so less air can get through because it's having to try to squeeze through. 
yeah. instead of just going. You also look like a turtle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good reasons. So that's why we keep nice, relaxed shoulders, and keep everything as open as we possibly can. And now uh, I've got a little activity for for us to do to help um, feel the difference with diaphragmatic breathing. And, but I'm going to ask you guys to be mature about this. And don't do a whole lot of talking. Don't do a lot of messing around. Just do what I ask. Can we do that? Yeah. All right, everyone lay down on the floor. If you need to go over where the tables aren't so there's a little bit more room, go right next to it. Yeah, you can just stay there right there. for the whole lesson <laughs> and okay so like we were on the floor one hand on your chest one hand on your stomach and try to recreate the feeling you felt on the floor deep breath in and out now how is that different from how it felt on the floor Because that's how we get a good breath. 
but we more naturally just kind of breathe in the chest area because unless we're doing something where we need to um, talk loudly and project, we don't usually do this deep of breathing. And, and you mentioned it not expanding out as much. One thing about it also lying on the floor, there's kind of a floor in the way to keep it from expanding back. But when you're standing up, it's not just one direction that it can go. It can get all the way around your torso and expand. And anyone else have something they'd like to share about the experience? My chest moves. That's what we're just talking about. Yeah. Yeah. As it shouldn't move as much because, like I said, and your lungs are inside of your rib cage, and you can't get much bigger than your rib cage. And but. And uh, yeah, just because it's how our bodies move and almost constantly moving, we feel a little bit of movement. And uh, now there are a lot of um, ways to help with projection, but a good starting point is a good posture, a good relaxed position. So uh, show me what you think that would look like. And if you need to not be on your feet, that's fine. I just ask that you sit up, so. Um, okay, and good, I'm seeing lots of hands at the sides. And, and feet should be pretty much a straight line underneath the shoulder, hers, because honestly, you, you go much skinnier or much farther apart. It's kind of hard to balance. And so, you know, shoulders right down and into the feet. And I am going to reemphasize that again because I see people trying to be funny and spraying their legs out really far. Okay. And one of the big things with projection and is we talked about confidence. And one of the big things that we are trying to communicate is confidence. What we say is important. Otherwise, we would not be saying it. And, and everyone deserves to hear it. Because your words are important. Because you guys are important. Each one of you guys is a king, queen, or monarch in your own right. Okay. Hey, all you ladies, you are all queens. All you gentlemen, you are all kings. Hey, if you want to go by something gender neutral, you are monarchs. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. So, so carry yourself with the posture and composure of a ruler of a land. And. And, and stand tall, stand strong, and we are going to say all together in an authoritative projecting voice, I am a whichever one of those three you just, uh, you most identify with. And, uh, I'm getting a countdown for you to all do it uh, together. Er, inhale, one, two, Three. I am a queen. I am a queen. Very good, you guys. And but I, and part of it also, oh, commanding respect, authoritative, and, and saying it with the certainty that this isn't just a cute little thing. This is true. You are important, and your words matter as much as any world leaders. So say it with the authority of trying to get everyone to listen to you. Everyone in every far reach of your kingdom. Um, inhale. One, two, three. I am a king. Man, that's awesome. Uh, you guys are doing great. Hey, now, uh, let
let's work on, on increasing that royal power. Uh, uh, Mrs. Gillespie told me that you guys have done a variation of this exercise before, but I think it's awesome, so we're going to do it again. And we're going to start out. I'm going for two counts, breathe in, two counts, breathe out. Ready? Inhale. One, two. Exhale. One, two. Again. Inhale, one, two, exhale, one, two. Please do not lean on the stage. We are talking royal posture. Uh, okay. Okay, now, now we're going to do the same thing again, but with four counts instead of two. Okay, ready? Inhale, one, two, three, four, exhale. One, two, three, four. Again, inhale. One, two, three, four. Exhale. One, two, three, four. You're very good, guys. Now, like I said earlier, er, I want you guys to uh, be here for the whole lesson. And so continuing on, if you start feeling lightheaded and you need to, to sit down, please do. But don't just pretend to be lightheaded so you have an excuse to sit down. You, I understand. <laughs> and, and, and just, and so we're going, yes? Inhale, one, two, three, 
are not physically capable of doing this. I understand. I ask that you try, but it's not like you're <coughs> going to be punished for not being physically capable of doing it. We're going to try inhaling for two counts, exhaling for eight. Okay. If you need to, it's up. I'm noticing a lot of yawning. That's the, what I just did. See, I was like, I've been yawning all day. Me? Let's 
good guys. Okay. And we have been working on volume and pushing from the stomach. Now let's add some pitch range into it. And how high or low we can go. So we're going to do an activity called bottle rocket. Bottle rocket. Now, now we're going to, it's going to be a simple throughout. You're going to start in about the middle of your range, and then you're going to go higher and higher and higher to the very top of your range, and then you're going to go down and 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 I request that you please and do the hand raising and lowering with it because having the physical thing with it actually helps you visualize it. And so, ready? Gonna do it all together. Or inhale. Let's try. Okay. Hey, okay, so um, we are going to 